Earlier we talked about how there's two uh, main kinds of statistics. There's inferential statistics where you take a sample uh, data and you use that to make inferences about a population. And there's descriptive statistics which are numbers that summarize data sets. Uh, well, we're going to start talking now about these descriptive statistics. Um, and there's two main kinds of descriptive statistics. Uh, there's central tendency, um, which um, which summarizes uh, the where, where the middle or the center of a bunch of different scores are. And an example that you're already familiar with of uh, central tendency is a regular old average. Uh, the other uh, main kind of um, descriptive statistic uh, is variability. And variability just tells us how spread out scores are. So if there's a bunch of uh, measurements and everybody uh, um, is very similar to one another, there's not very much variability in that data set. Um, but if there's a lot of people that are just spread out really far across the um, the possible values, uh, then that data set has a lot of variability. So variability tells us how spread out they are. Central tendency tells us where um, where the center of all of those data points falls. So variability um, is how spread out the scores or the data set are. All right, so um, just generally, uh, if um, if this is two people here, maybe they have a value of 10. This person has a value of 11. There's one here. Um, and there's, all, there's the four people, and they're all really close to each other. There's not very much variability. And their center is right around there. Um, but if we add more people, now the scores are more spread out. So there's more variability, although the center is still in the same place. If we add a lot of scores over, over here, um, now the center shifts over here, um, and it's got a bit of variability still. So this kind of illustrates uh, central tendency uh, and variability. And these are the main kind of descriptive statistics, although uh, not the only ones. We'll talk about more later on. All right, so now we're talking about different kinds of central tendency, which uh, are numbers that describe uh, where a data set, uh, like where the center of it, where, where they tend to cluster. And uh, there's three kinds of central tendency, the mean, the median, and the mode. All right, so the mean um, is just the numeric uh, average of the data. So the mean is what you calculated you know, in your math classes your whole life. That one's really familiar. And people, when, they, when, when regular folks use the word average, they're referring to what statisticians call the mean. Uh, the median is the middlemost score, so the one in the middle. And I'll illustrate this in a little bit. And the mode is the most common score. So. Uh, let's say we have a data set. So x means it's a variable, so we're calling this variable x. Um, and we have somebody, we measure them and their score is 2. We measure another person, their score is also 2. And we measure a third person, their score is 5. Right? So there's three people uh, in this data set. Um, and so first we'll talk about the mean. Um, and so the mean is the numeric average, so um, you just add up all of the scores, that's what this means. Uh, this is sigma x, or you add up all of the x scores, then you divide it by the sample size. So there's one, two, three people in this data set, so n is three. Uh, and again, this is the familiar old average that you already know. So to calculate um, the mean, the symbol is x with a bar over the top called x bar. Right, so x bar 
is add them all up, 2 plus 2 plus 5, divide by how many there are, 1, 2, 3. So 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 5 is 9, divided by 3. So 3 is the mean. Now I also want to illustrate visually, as we calculated the mean of this data set, to be 3. An interesting characteristic uh, of the mean um, is that the mean is the uh, weight center point of the uh, data set. So uh, with, the, with uh, the scores of 2, 2, and 5, uh, we could draw that out. So I'm going to just say, so this is where 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, and 5s would go. And we have a 2, so I'm going to put a box above the 2 and another box for the other 2. And there's a 5, so that's going to go over here with one box. And so if you think of this as like a teeter-totter, the mean is going to be the fulcrum, the point at which um, the balance is equal on the two sides um, and where it would rotate if it would do so, right? And so notice that this two goes over one that direction and this two goes over one that direction as well and the five goes over two in that direction, right? So this is balancing out the distance from the average. Right, so the, the mean is the center point in that sense. And if you literally cr like physically created this and you put the, the, the one block over here and the two blocks over here uh, and you put the fulcrum in the middle, that's the perfect balance point. That's what the mean is. Um, so it's the center point um, of where all of the scores average each other out as far as their distance from the middle. All right, so um, next I want to talk about the median and how to identify it, it's really easy. So it's the middlemost score. So for us, in this data set, we have a 2, a 2, and a 5. So the middlemost score, to, to identify that, what you do is you take all of the numbers and you lay them out low to high, and then you just remove them from the edge until you get one left in the middle. So in this case, the middlemost score, the median, uh, is 2. If we would have had a different data set, that would have been a 2, a 2, a 3, and a 5. Uh, then when we start excluding from the edge, we get to the middle, and there's two scores there. Uh, to calculate the median in that case, you just take the average, 2 plus 3 divided by 2. So in that case, the, the median would have been 2 and a half. Uh, but the median is really easy to calculate. Just sort them out low to high. Exclude them until you get to the middle, and the one that's left over is your median score. Okay, so um, the last measure of central tendency is the mode. That's the most common score. Uh, so with a 2 and a 2 and a 5, um, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we, so if these are the scores, right, and we could count, we could say what the count is of each. So for 2s, there's one 2 of those. There's two 2s. For how many 3s how many are there? There's 0. Fours, there's zero. Fives, there's one. Uh, so I go down the count, and the most common score is going to have the highest count. So in this case, it's two. Two is the highest count, so the actual mode is this two. These two are the most common. So two, in this example, is the mode. And those are the three measures of central tendency. Um, they're used in different contexts and practice. Uh, so the mean can only be used for scale variables, right? So recall that means they're either interval scale of measure or ratio scale of measure. You can't actually calculate a meaningful mean with, uh, with <laughs> uh, you can't calculate a meaningful mean with uh, uh, nominal or ordinal variables. It just doesn't make sense to create an average of those. Um, and because scale variables are the most common outcome variables in psychology, the mean is the most common kind of central tendency that's used in uh, psychology. Um, the mean is also especially good when your distribution of scores is symmetrical. Right, so what that means is if you have a distribution of scores, we'll say 
zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Um, if there's a lot of folks here, it's a three, four, and five. So here, this distribution is symmetrical because if you put a mirror on one side, it would look exactly like the other side. That's a perfectly symmetrical distribution. Um, and means are best then. They're less good, less accurate, less informative about where the center of the distribution is if the distribution instead looks something like this. This isn't symmetrical at all. If you put a mirror in the middle, the two sides don't look at all like one another. So this is a skewed distribution, it's called, because it's not symmetrical. Here, the mean would be over here, uh, but it doesn't really tell you about, how, like, the center is over on one side, and so it's kind of a hard, if you just know the mean and you don't know what these, the state of distribution looks like, it's kind of hard to know how to interpret it. Uh, and so it's just a less accurate summary of how the uh, data clusters together. Uh, so one thing you could use for this kind of uh, distribution, and what's commonly used uh, for the measure of central tendency, is the median. So the median is often used for, um, for skewed data sets like this. So you'd go in from the middle to find out what it is, and I could do that. That'd be kind of fun. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, one. So the median in this case um, would be four. So that's where it would be in the middle for the media, uh, for the median. Uh, the median is also good when there are outliers. So outliers are data points that are really far away from where all the other scores are. So we'll extend this. Negative one, negative two. And we'll say there's a couple scores over here, and these are outliers because they're very far away from all of the other data points. And if you calculate the mean, these are actually going to be really influential because if you think about that balancing point, these two points are going to pull it over quite a bit. Um, the median, however, doesn't really take those into account. So if you, if you did the median, take these two, take these two, right, the median, one, two, three, four, the median is still going to be uh, four. So these didn't influence the median, uh, even though those two scores were very far out, those outliers were very far out there. Um, so medians are nice, when they ignore outliers, uh, and they're not too affected when the uh, distribution is skewed. Uh, the mean is really affected by outliers, so it's a little hard, a little questionable to use in that case, and um, but it, and if this, the distribution is skewed, it's not great there either. Uh, the mode is what you want to use if you have nominal variables. Um, you can't even calculate a mean or a median with nominal variables. It doesn't make sense. Um, so this would just tell you which category is the most common. So for males and females, for example, which everyone has, if we have more males than females, um, the central tendency is males. If you have more males than females, then the, the mode is males. So that's the where your data uh, tended to cluster with males rather than females. Uh, the mode can also be useful if you have a multimodal distribution. So So if you had something that ended up looking like this, the mean, the mean would be someplace over in the middle here, which is there's no data points there at all, so it's kind of a strange way to try to say that's where the center of the data set is. Uh, the median um, would be over here, so it wouldn't even be influenced by these, basically. Uh, so it's also a little bit strange, but the mode um, would be, there's the multimodal means there's more than one peak, there's more than one mode, right? And so basically for, the, for this context, what you do is you calculate one central tendency for this cluster and another one for this cluster. So here, you'd have two modes, four and negative one would be the two modes for this bimodal, the two modes, this bimodal distribution. Okay.